And now let's welcome Numadium. Thank you. In 20 seconds, I will step in front of a crowd of real investors and pitch them the idea of potentially saving lives with a special kind of drone. And this is just one of the use cases of early prevention and monitoring. Let's get right into it. All right, let's do this. So I'm George from Nomarium, and this is the Pathfinder One. This drone is 3D printed in one day. It can take off and land vertically. It can perform fully autonomous flight missions. And unlike traditional quadcopter drones, it has 10 times the range, unlocking powerful new use cases. The Pathfinder One can potentially help us protect our forests with early prevention and monitoring of wildfires. It can protect our people with AI-powered search and rescue operations. And it can protect critical infrastructure with autonomous long-range inspections. Instead of sending humans to remote locations, the Pathfinder One can perform routine inspections up to 150 kilometers away in a fraction of the cost. And that makes it the most efficient way to do inspections and monitoring in a market that's expected to grow to 40 billion US dollars. So help us put an AI in Bulgaria's sky so we can protect our forests, our infrastructure and our people. Thank you. How, how long can you hold it like this? Hmm? Should we make a competition? Yeah, it's actually very light. Yeah, it's like uh, 2.5 kilograms. It's incredible. Cool. So what is the purpose here? Well, I live in Bulgaria in Eastern Europe where we have one rescue helicopter. And that means that whenever a disaster happens, uh, there are rarely any drones or UAVs that can provide aerial intelligence from above. I believe that with this drone platform that is super long range, we can actually provide continued assistance, like in terms of aerial intelligence in order to coordinate rescue efforts, to prevent wildfires by using like machine learning to spot uh, like for smoke and fire in the mountain ranges uh, that actually consumed the villages this year. It was horrible. We can do preventative maintenance on critical infrastructure in the energy grid and telecommunications. And like there are so many opportunities that we just have to do this. I don't know if you've had one of these moments where you just have to do it because like everything tells you that you need to do it. So this is the moment. Uh, we are either going to fly high or we are going to fail spectacularly. So strap in for the ride. But enough rambling. I will show you how the audience and the investors reacted to the pitch and what were their questions because they were super interesting. All right. Thank you for having me. I'm open for questions. Yes, that's the first prototype uh, in the Yes, we've already done hover tests and we're about to do autonomous long distance tests. Uh, would you please elaborate on the different use cases of this product? Yes, so I envision a future where we make aerial intelligence accessible and available to businesses and governments. And that means that, uh, so for example, right now, if you were to inspect a 5G tower or some energy grid, you need to send a drone pilot that goes there by uh, like a 4x4, four four. he drives there, a person, to inspect the tower. With this, you can send it from a nearby city, it can autonomously complete, it will be able to autonomously complete the mission and return on its own. So essentially, we're bringing, uh, like we're eliminating, eliminating the need to send people to remote locations. Because yes, this will be able to carry out the inspection on its own. Uh, what else? Uh, well, those are not really business cases, but we can help protect forests by like uh, finding uh, wildfires early because this thing can fly four hours in one or two years with battery advancements. It will be able to fly six or eight hours so we can monitor hard to reach terrain. Uh, we can also find missing people because right now camera technology and sensors have advanced. So we have thermal cameras with AI capability that can detect objects. Uh, so we could potentially find missing people. Right, and what are the limitations? I mean, height-wise, temperature-wise, is there any limitations here? Mm, well, 3D printing materials have advanced quite a bit, uh, so they can withstand high temperatures, uh, high winds, so 
not a lot of limitations. This technology is relatively new. The ability to have a fixed wing plane that takes off vertically and can land anywhere. So it's able to take off vertically? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. That's the big thing because you don't need an airfield. It can take off like a traditional drone, but it can travel like this thing should be able to travel about 300 kilometers, which is insane because traditional drones can fly up to 25 minutes. This should be able to do four hours. So I'm in a pretty remote location. Um, how much is this thing if I want this to cover the area where we are to find missing people? Uh, we haven't calculated costs yet. I'm sorry. Yeah. But since we are replacing actual humans, uh, like a mission with this should be relatively cheap. So you would rent this for a mission or you would buy this for a location? No, we want to provide this as a service. Like ideally we should have three or five bases to cover like 98% of Bulgaria. And when some government, uh, when the government or a company needs aerial intelligence, uh, they send a mission to us, we execute the mission, and then we provide them the link with the cloud data that they need. How do you separate relevant from irrelevant data, which is collected during flight? Mm. And how much money do you need to raise to make this success? Well, hmm. I guess that's a question for the next step in our development, but relevant data will first be sorted out by humans on our team, and then when we gain experience, we'll figure out how to automate that process. Yes. But the idea is that this thing can fly in a straight line to the location that you demand, and then it can circle around, and then the sensors point at the actual target, and they collect uh, you can do photogrammetry, you can use LiDAR, you can use uh, thermal cameras, and that's how you make the actual inspections. And when it returns, uh, the data is uploaded to the cloud, where there, then it is processed and sent to the client. How much money do you have to raise? Hmm. We don't really need to raise yet. The ideal path would be to find a client that is willing to, pay, to start paying us from now to execute missions so that we can learn and grow and develop the technology with them. So a client that needs uh, like uh, recurring inspections to be made on a remote location, that would be ideal. Of course, with funding, we'll be able to grow faster, but like, not really necessary to make this a reality. So you said you need five bases for all of Bulgaria? Uh, yes, that would be uh, probably... <laughs> Yes, we will need funding for the five bases because they would need to be robotized. Uh, but for this stage of development, we don't really need that. So how many planes do you, uh, sorry, drones do you envision uh, for those five bases when, when you have a complete business? I would say about five drones per base. So that's not too much. So no, here we're not talking about a manufacturing business where you have to make many of these. No, no. And you okay. can assemble one of these in one day. It's time you know to wake up. Doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If I'm not wrong, in Bulgaria we have a company that does uh, something similar, MYX or something, yeah. and uh, they are inspecting uh, towers or, or so. Uh, how are you better or how are you different and uh, what do you plan to really overcome even this competition mm. or rival from, from Bulgaria? It's a local company and they do telco stuff. Uh, as far as I know. Uh, honestly, I would love to meet those guys. I have not heard yet about them, which is an error on my part. Uh, so I would love to get in touch with them and get to know them. Uh, for us, it's too early to answer that question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for Elena will hold for one more from me here. Okay. Maybe. Uh, so, first, how much does it cost this thing? Like, roughly? This prototype is a thousand euros, which is nothing. Okay. I, I think there is a market for this. Do you think there is a company that already provides that kind of a service to inspect different like forests or towers or whatever. Uh, and then instead of creating uh, a service just to sell the hardware to them, because the current drones, obviously, they service different market and they don't have the efficiency of flying so far away. Yeah. So instead of making a service company, just be a hardware company and you sell your product to them or just give it as a... And I'm not asking you a question, I'm just saying take some time to research if you can just market this as a, 
uh, as a hardware and give it to companies that already established a service of that sort. And right, thank you idea. for the question. Uh, the idea of a service is that they wouldn't have to hire pilots and they wouldn't have to figure everything out when we can just do it for them. And that's how we can provide a lot more value to those customers. Uh, Uh, no, not with the camera, yes. So this is without sensors, it has a basic FPV camera. Uh, the thermal camera is about 1,000 euros, so... I mean, if you want to go crazy, you can go up to like $50,000 cameras, so... You can plug in cameras. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you agree that Questions from the investors were spot on and they opened even more questions and more assumptions to be tested, which is exactly what we're going to do in the next videos. But there is another interesting part of this pitch and that's the questions from the actual non-investor audience, the people that just came to see what was new. Uh, my question is the drone guy, sorry to refer to you as the drone guy, but um, my question is, first of all, is there anything proprietary about the technology? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. So right now, all of this is in the hackerspace. This is running Ardu Pilot. So essentially, the setup that we do is proprietary, and then all the technology that we're going to develop eventually will be. Uh, so we're using this as a platform just to get up in the air so we can start performing. Uh, what will be proprietary sorry, is the ability to actually do autonomous missions that can inspect a certain object because that requires coordination between the drone and the gimbal camera. As the drone circles around the target, the gimbal camera needs to uh, identify the target and to scan the points that the, user, that the customer requires. So this will be the first proprietary technology that we're going to develop. And the second is the actual hub where the drone lifts off from and then returns to, because we want that to be a robotized base without actual humans inside. And follow-up question, why do you want to do this as a service and not instead sell it to various organizations or, you know, go into defense and sell the software as a service rather than you providing the service yourself? Well, if you set it as hardware, then you need to train staff to do it, and that would be expensive for any company. Whereas uh, we envision a service that's so accessible to the businesses that they just go to, an, to a website, make an order, and then they'll have the result within, say, eight hours or the next day. For most companies, that would make sense. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Stephanie. I used to work for international NGOs in Brussels in charge of fundraising. And one of the things that um, was really, really put forward in um, the, so I was in charge of direct marketing and appeals to individual fundraising. We would um, explain, I would have the rangers on the phone. They would explain to me the project. I would put forward what they need to do their job. It would be night goggle vision, it would be different tools. I think this tool could be useful. And to join with the question that he asked, Maybe they would buy some. Yeah, hopefully. That's our assumption. But not rent, buy. Uh, buy. Oh. Yeah. Just to keep in mind. Oh, sure, of course, we are open to it. We would just want to provide the most low cost solution so that a lot of businesses can access it. But if someone needs uh, like, to have their own base with their own fleet, running our software, that's fine, of course. Yeah. Look at our international NGOs that cover a lot of land, yeah. and that could really help them um, and help you. I think. Yeah, that would be perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, this is a great place to end this episode. In the next one, we will see one of the guys from the audience that is actually an engineer and he bombarded me with all sorts of technical questions, which was super fun. We ended up meeting after this uh, in their workshop. He's an incredibly brilliant engineer uh, and we're likely to going to be working together. We'll see. Uh, I'm also going to show you how I actually started building this drone because that was quite the journey. Like I started from basically zero knowledge into something that like flies, like it's just wild. So I'll see you in the next one and thank you for watching.